Grace and peace, beloved. Hey, always let you all come on a little early because you're partners. You know, because of you, I'm able to do what I do. And uh, this word is primarily for our impact group, for us. But I'm thankful that we're able to reach many others. I just pray that you take pride in the word of God that comes over this LBC channel on YouTube. Help us get to more subscribers. We are a few short of 100. I would love to get to 150 by uh, Passion Season, the end of Resurrection Season. I, I think if each of you invited a family to tune in to our YouTube channel and subscribe, uh, we got so much great things going on on our channel and um, trying to do our best to keep the political stuff out of it. You know, I mean, I just want you to be blessed. And that's why we're on here. So you all do so much to make sure we're effective. And Life Builders, I love you. You have been a blessing to Pastor Al and I. And uh, every time I come on, I come on to give God the glory. So I'm excited about what's about to happen today. Will you pray for me uh, that we continue on in the word of the Lord? And will you know that always we do what we do to bring God glory? And I never want to make you shame to say I'm a part of Life Builders Church. So you get the glory, Lord, out of all this said and done today and have your way. All right, we're going live in less than one minute, and God will be glorified today through the word. Oh, it's a powerful word today, so I'm excited about it. All right, we're getting the juices rolling. Stuff is getting turned on. Let's get ready. Let's go. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. You all are a blessing to me, and I love you so much. Y'all ready for this word? Y'all ready to see the move of God? All right. All right. We're coming. Get ready to go on. Midday matter. Start sharing. Start sharing right now. I mean, right now. Start sharing and let somebody know that Midday Manor is coming at you. My God, my God, my God. Are y'all ready? I said, are y'all ready? I mean it. Are y'all ready for Midday Manor? I am. I am. I'm excited about coming on today. I'm excited about the strong move of the Spirit of God on this broadcast. It's going to be bananas.
Good day, everybody. Happy noon, happy noon, happy noon, happy noon. We are in this part of the day where we say, as always, welcome to Midday Matter. Today is Wednesday. It is the 10th already of March. Lord have mercy. This month is just going by real good. Hey, share with somebody. Let them know that Midday Matter is on the air. We are streaming Facebook Live on our Light Builders Church page and group. We're streaming also to uh, other venues by Periscope for Light Builders Church Periscope page. We're streaming, beloved, by way of um, YouTube that we'll show later. But we got it going on, Light Book, Life, uh, Life Book. Maybe that's a good idea, Life Book. Uh, we got it on uh, Facebook Live. We got it on uh, uh, our YouTube. We got it going on with our Periscope. I just want you to join us. Let somebody know that Midday Matter is streaming right now. Oh my God, before we go any further, I want to advertise, I want to push, I want to talk about my wife's wonderful book. Hey baby, I love her so much. She wrote this book on forgiveness. Forgiveness. Ah, God, can I just say this real quick? Have you ever thought you were doing everything correctly? yet found it difficult to let go of unresolved issues. Come on. You feel stuck, restricted, and able, unable to move forward. Well, the 490 factor deals with the inner struggles of offense while ministering sound, applicable, and scriptural instruction to not just move on, but live the abundant life. I like that. So many people just say, go ahead and move on. Get over it. Well, there got to be some healing. There got to be some forgiveness. There got to be some reconciliation. There got to be some understanding of where we stand, you know. Just can't just move on and act like you don't have feelings. Act like you don't exist or the person that you have been offended by or offended don't exist. You got to set things right. This book helps you do that. It's available on Amazon in paperback and also on your Kindle player, Kindle reader, working on getting, working on it to get on other venues. Right now, you can go to Amazon and buy this book. Come on, buy it. It'll bless you. Use your Kindle reader, buy it. You know, it's written by Althea Carrington, The 490 Factor. I'm telling you, this is a powerful book. I'm so proud of my wife, proud of her for giving me, loving me through it all. I maybe was her test case. <laughs> Oh, I love Althea, but I appreciate this book and I want to push it. I want you to go buy it. Listen, it'll bless you. The 490 Factor. Get it today on Amazon. Amen. We'll announce to you when it's available on other venues. But right now you can get it in Kindle, on your reader, or on paperback. In paperback. All right? Get this book. Father, thank you for what you're about to do today. Thank you for what you're about to speak. Thank you for the way being made to come over this venue to be a blessing to your people. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be completely acceptable in your sight. Father, indeed, you are my strength and my redeemer. Anoint our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, and our lives to be blessed. Take us out of self. Use us for someone else. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, share with me. Take an occasion to share. Amen. I'm excited about this coming passion season. I'm also excited about next week, next Friday, and next Saturday will be our leadership summit, our uh, leadership intensive. All is going to be powerful. Placid of Braswell going to be speaking. Powerful woman of God. Then my friend, Pastor Doug Taylor, powerful man of God from Alabama. Oh my God, gonna be speaking on that Saturday. It's gonna be an opportunity for putback. I'm talking about putback. This pandemic season has been causing all and many leaders, God, to put out in unprecedented ways. I mean, some of us have experienced our own pain, but we've also been called aside to help others through their pain. And this is not a mental health uh, 
leadership intensive, but it is put back. And if it were mental health, it would bless you, wouldn't hurt you. But this is all about put back. You give out, you cannot minister from your overflow if you don't have a full cup. If you're on E, you're not going to do anybody any good. And I teach those that are under my sphere of influence, minister out of your overflow. Keep your cup full, but minister to people out of your overflow. And this has been a time that if you allow it to would drain, not just your overflow, but your own storage. And that can't be good. Because if you break down, who's going to help the people you serve? So get the information. It is on Facebook. You can also access it on our website for our leadership intensive, www.lbcbaltimore.org. And uh, if you don't see it there, then call us at 443-776-0255. It is $20. And look, it's not just for leaders, but for both days, both days you get access to the session. That's the only way you'll get the link. You got to register $20 investing yourself. You know, we ask for the registration so you can take it and count it as important. I'm not wasting my $20. I'm going to tune in. So please, make it available to yourself. Get with it. And the leadership intensive will do you good. If you happen to be a Facebook friend of mine, it is right on my page. Nothing else on that first place. But we're talking about the leadership intensive. We want you to register. All right? We want you to be a part. And God do you good. Oh, let's hold up our Bibles now and let's declare together, ready for the word. Lord, I thank you that I have a Bible. It is my personal copy, a basic instruction before leaving earth. I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm not just a hearer, but I'm also a doer. And my life is so much better because I hear and obey the word of the living God. Therefore, I declare my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will not be distracted, but I will hear what thus saith the Lord. And as a result of what I hear today, somebody help me declare I'm going to leave this experience better than I came to it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Beloved, I'm talking, this is lesson number four. My God, for the sake of our impact group members, but it is lesson number four. We've been talking about the power of the Holy Ghost, the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And today we want to go to lesson four entitled, Why Live on the Fringes? Let me, let me buckle up for this. Why live on the fringes? Beloved, you know, there's a lot of people that fight the things of God. I, I have to say that because that's exactly what it is. You hear stuff like, it don't take all that. You hear stuff like, it, 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 that's not required in this day. They, 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 there's a, a move to cherry pick and say that grace is enough. And uh, I'm not an enemy of grace. I'm an enemy of we're not rightly dividing scripture. For the grace of God that has appeared uh, unto all men has given us salvation, has caused us to walk. The great grace of God, the manifold grace of God has been a gift to us, seeking to deny ungodliness and word in us that we may live soberly and righteously and godly in this present time. Grace does not replace, however, the indwelling, the infilling and the power working of the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, it is the Holy Ghost that plugs you into that grace. It is the Holy Ghost that plugs you into the benefits of walking in the Holy Spirit by the grace of God. By grace we are saved through faith. My God, it is not of works lest any man should boast. Hallelujah. It is a gift of God. By the Holy Spirit, we can walk in the gifting, operate in the gifting, benefit from the gifting. Are you hearing me? So we got folks saying that don't take all that. You don't need the Holy Spirit. You know, you just live by the grace of God. You'll be all right. Get saved, confess your mouth, go forward. And I'm not here throwing rocks. 
you know, kind of bothers me today. And just a side note, how some preachers take broadcast time to say what other preachers aren't preaching and to down other preachers. I, I don't have time for that. No, I just want to tell you the truth. We need the grace of God. We need the fullness of the grace of God. Yes, but that's nothing without the plug-in of the Holy Spirit. You receive and are indwelt by the Holy Ghost. I heard the Bible say, I read it, we shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon us and we shall be witnesses. How can you witness what has not happened to you, what you have not seen, what you have not heard, what you have not experienced? So I thank God for the Holy Ghost. I praise God for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in my life. Don't regret it one bit. Hallelujah. He has benefited me. And I thank God for it. So why live on the fringes? Well, let's get into it. Some folk, when it comes to being sold out to God, feel like it doesn't take all that. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm religious. And here's the big word today. I'm spiritual. I'm not I'm not a Christian, but I'm spiritual. And uh, I'm not throwing rocks at you. But what does that really mean? It means that you're mystic. It means that you're deep. Does it mean that you have some kind of conscious or conscience? Uh, what does it mean to be spiritual? Listen, there's a lot of spirits floating out here. Spirits inspired by Satan, demonic spirits. There's even drinking spirits. You know, bitters and all those things that I'm not telling you don't do. I'm just saying, look, why don't you be specific? Why don't you say, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? I mean, what, what's the problem? You know, I, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm led by the Holy Spirit. I'm directed by the Holy Spirit. Can I tell y'all a secret? And I don't mind you knowing, I'm not religious at all. I'm trying to get rid of every stench of religion because religion is man's attempt to please God according to man's standards. Even Jesus had to correct this and even Paul said that true religion and a pure and undefiled and also the other apostles said it's feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, taking care of the widow. That's, that's true religion. Religion is not a measure of deepness, nor is it a measure of how much good things you do and how much you belong to this civic society or go to church uh, just to put it on your resume. You hear people talking that I'm a devout Christian, <coughs> but have no fruit. People said I'm a devout Catholic, have no fruit. You know, you need the Holy Ghost, which helps you bear fruit. So when you say you're spiritual, you really need to be careful because you might be claiming something you can't handle. Let's go right to the source and claim I have the Holy Spirit. So we're 100% when we were 100% in sin. Come on, stay with me. I was a sinner. I was a sinner. I was in sin 100%. I was in sin from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I enjoyed sinning. I didn't like the consequences when I got caught, or I didn't like the guilt, but I enjoyed sin. The pleasures of sin are for a season, but that season is enjoyable till you got to pay the cost. Oh, but God's grace won't let me pay the cost. His mercy will keep me from the cost. You can't count on that, beloved. The wages of sin is still death, but the gift of God is still eternal life. Oh, you preach a condemnation. No, I'm not preaching condemnation. I'm telling you the truth. Sin has Someone at the end of your sin, they got to be paid. Sin demands payment. But Jesus paid for my sins on the cross. Yeah, he did. The sins we would commit, the sins we have committed, the sins we are committing right now. But I respect what he did too much to keep on sinning so that grace may abound. And I just take for granted, he going to forgive me anyway. So let me get myself in this. There are some things we do we may not survive. I'm not ready to die yet. I'm not ready to give up the ghost yet. I'm not ready to end my living here because I got so much to do. So the wages of sin is death. It will always be death. Yet the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And I have eternal life. 
I have abundant life. I have blessed life because of the Holy Ghost and his work in my life. So while I was in sin, I was 100% in sin, living a false sense of enjoyment. Stay with me. Living a false sense of happiness. But now that I'm in Christ, why give him less? I gave my all to sin. Why give Christ less? Why live less? Why live on the fringes? Let me define fringe living. Fringe living. Mm. Oh, God. Mm. Out on the borders, this, this, this table has a fringe existence. It's all the way out of here somewhere, you know. But I want to utilize the table. I'm not leaning on the table out here on the edge where I don't have stability. But I'm on this table full force, not on the fringes. God have mercy. Fringe living is living beneath of, outside of, and falling short of what could be the manifested abundant life through and in Christ. Can I say that again? Fringe living is living beneath of, outside of, and falling short of what could be the manifested abundant life through and in Christ Jesus. I love that. I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Friends living. There's so much God has for us. And it's through and by the Holy Spirit that we get to access it. Look at this text with me. Come on. Let's go to the word. Acts Chapter 19, verse 1 through 7. Acts, A-C-T-S, chapter 19, verse 1 through 7. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Wow. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, Truly John baptized, verily John baptized with the baptism of repentance. Turn around. Mm -hmm. Going in the right direction. Saying unto the people that they should relieve on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. That they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on and upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all men were about twelve. Twelve folk have not heard of the Holy Ghost. We haven't heard whether they even be a Holy Ghost. He, you ask us, have we been filled with the Holy Ghost? And I'm so glad that that lesson stands because there are people today who don't know about the power of the Holy Ghost because they have not heard about it. How could they hear without a preacher? How can the preacher be uh, out there preaching unless it be sin? Okay? Some folk don't preach about the Holy Ghost anymore. And we have to understand there are people that because we don't preach about him anymore, folk don't know about him anymore. I mean, folk know how to be emotional. Folk know how to fall on the floor. Folk know how to name it, claim it, blab it, and grab it. Folk know how to come out their pocket and treat God like the lottery. When the prophet come in town and uh, want a new car, new house, new cash, cars, cribs, and clothes. So we'll give a hundred dollars. Won't tithe, but we'll give, oh, see, I got to be eight. Uh, won't tithe, but they'll give a hundred dollars in the profit line. Want to get quick fix, wanting something basically for nothing. And um, while I'm on that, uh, we've misused the office of the prophet. I know that even during the election, Folk were out here naming people that prophesied in election result and, and saying all these things were the prophets wrong and 
having Zooms and having YouTubes and having all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, panels on where the prophets wrong. And beloved, what I'm here to tell you is that is not the question we should be asking. The question is, have we misused the office of the prophet? Because the prophet didn't come to just tell you getting a new house, a new car, new clothes, a new cash. Prophet is not just to give you, my God, some kind of word about your husband, or a word about your future wife, or a word about a job. Prophets come to speak the will of God into your life. They come to speak the plan of God for your life and the purpose of God upon your life. Plan, will, purpose. PWP. Plan of God for your life. Will of God for your life. Purpose of God for your life. That's what prophets come to speak. Prophets also come to bring correction. Oh, when David had messed up, Nathan came and dealt with it. You know, do we really want the ministry of true prophets? So let's stop asking where the prophet's wrong and start asking, do I really respect the office of the prophet? Enough for the prophet to speak into my life, thus saith the Lord. Oh, God. Then we also sometimes misunderstand the gift of prophecy for the gift of interpretation or actually the gift of uh, discernment. The gift of discernment is totally different from the gift of prophecy. Discernment of spirits. You're knowing for sure. God's showing you something about the present situation. Prophet, God speaking or foretelling or foretelling about your life, your surroundings, your future. Prophesying even from your past to heal what's in your present. God have mercy. Discernment deals with one aspect of bringing the unknown into the known for a specific situation. Not necessarily dealing with the past. Not necessarily dealing with your future. But dealing with your present. God have mercy. But when the prophetic comes, it corrects, it directs, and it causes there to be change. Come on, somebody. Twelve people that had not been filled with the Holy Ghost. Twelve people that were sincere because they got baptized under John's baptism. They were sincere. Yeah, they were. They were. But they had not yet received the Holy Ghost. God have mercy. They knew about repentance of the sins. Mm. But they were simply positioned at the entry of the door, so to speak. They had not fully gone in and come out or off from the fringes. I'm getting excited. They were out there looking into the window, but they did not go into the store. Oh, can I tell you what's in the store looks better up front than it does from the window. What God has for you is better than looking at somebody else living by it and living from it. You need to go and get it for yourself. You need to go and get that for yourself. Oh, God have mercy. <laughs> they were on the fringes. That is until they heard that there was more. See, what I want to do today is give you an appetite, a taste of more. I want you to get an appetite, a taste for more. More than just being emotional in church. More than coming home watching Christian television. More than uh, carrying your Bible and a notepad. Making ugly faces when a point of profundity is mentioned. <laughs> Nothing wrong with none of that. But the Holy Ghost is more than that. He's more than that. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hear me, beloved. Mm, I feel the Holy Spirit. What we have is not to be all we have. Can you tweet that? Can you talk that? What we have, what I have, is not to be all I have. While the Lord is even all that I need, he has more for us about him that has been manifested or revealed. There's more to God than meets the eye. So let us define fringe living this way. Fringe living is having a minuscule 
small piece of what is available to you. Uh -huh. French living is limited access to what is intended to be fully accessible. Can I say that again? French living is having a small piece of what is available to and for you. French living is limited access to what is intended to be fully accessible. Beloved, I want to tell you, French living is substandard living. Yes, it is. French living is partial receiving at best. That's all you're going to get under Friends Living. Partial. Can I declare Friends Living is not God's best for you? Friends, Bishop. F R I N G E. Fringe. Friends Living is not God's best for you. Now, let's talk about how to avoid Fringe Living. Well, Friends Living can be avoided if, number one, you are ministered to and have access to revelatory ministry. French living can be avoided if you have access and make application to what you've been taught by revelatory living and revelatory ministry. In other words, look with me at Romans 10, 13 through 17. Romans 10 verse 13 through 17. God have mercy. Now I want to read that from the New King James. Romans 10 13 through 17. The Bible says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, delivered, healed, and set free. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? I referred to this text earlier. And how shall they call without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But ye have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then, Romans 6, 17, faith, the fact that I hear what God say, I believe what God say, I obey what God say, I adjust my speech, my thinking, my behavior to adjust to what God says, that faith. So then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Again, faith, me hearing God, me believing God, me obeying God, me adjusting my speech, my thoughts, my behavior to line up with what God says. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God have mercy. So, number one, I'm avoiding living on the fringes when the word of God is declared to me and I by faith receive it. My pastor loves to say this, the promises of God are received by faith. God promised to send the Holy Ghost. You believe that? Receive him because it's received by faith. Hallelujah. Friends, living must cause you to understand that faith does not produce fringe. And fringe will not support increasing faith. When your faith increases, fringe living decreases. It's like I get a taste and I want more of what God had. I want it, I want it, I like it, I like it. You know, that's, <laughs> that's how the response is. You got to be like, Lord, give me some more of that. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, fringe living will not support, my God, increasing faith. The word we hear, come on, hear me. I'm closing in a few minutes. Mixed with the power of the Holy Ghost, pulls us away from fringe living. Pulls us away 
from fringe living. Pulls us away from fringe living. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the pull of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Number two, fringe living can be avoided if you answer the call to receive and answer the call to keep receiving. Not just from God, but receiving God. You receive God when you receive the Holy Spirit. You receive God when you receive the power working in you, working on you, working through you. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Number three. My God, you can avoid living on the fringes simply if you choose not to. It's your choice. <laughs> You see, beloved, number one, again, you are ministered to and have access to revelatory understanding. And you can avoid fringe living if you just allow yourself to get it by access. I want this. That's why it's important to study the word, listen to your man or woman of God on a regular basis. Supplement that with other men and women of God. Let the word feed you. Let the word minister to you. Let the word bless you in a tremendous way awesome manner. Friends living won't allow you to do that. You know, friends living will tell you, I don't need that word. It will tell you, I don't need to be fed. That's a lie from the pit. It's a lie from the pit. Friends living can be avoided if you answer the call to receive. Go get it. Come get it. It's like the pancakes are ready. Turkey sauce is on the side. Maple syrup. Oh, fluffy, whipped. Oh, God, scrambled eggs. <laughs> you can put a little cheese on the side if you want it. A little ketchup over there, too, and some salsa. Come on, saints. A little turkey scrapple. <laughs> or beef scrapple, for that matter. Leave the, leave the, leave the poke alone. You know, it hurts you. But, ah, oh, God, oh, God. There's so much to the Holy Ghost. He opens the door to so much more of God. Friends living can be avoided, number three, if you simply choose to avoid it. The disciples confess that they had not even heard about the Holy Ghost. I, I ain't never heard of the Holy Ghost. But when he was offered to them, they received him. I would like to think they received him so easily because they did receive the repentance of John, which was the, re, the, the doctrine of baptism, of repentance. So the baptism of John talked about turning, changing your ways. And, and I think Paul came along at the right time when they were about to run out of gas of the efforts of changing their ways. So can I say this? John's baptism is correct. But John's baptism alone will leave you in your own works. You'll do your effort to change your ways to come under self-righteous acts. And you won't be in a posture to allow the Holy Ghost to lead and direct you, to teach you all things, to bring things back to your remembrance. See, that's why you need the Holy Spirit, not French. Yes, repent, but after that, ask God to fill you with his spirit. Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. I, I repent of my wrong, but Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He's the edge. So I'll get ready to close. I, I, I think you got it today. I, I believe that you're receiving something. And before I close, I'm, I'm calling somebody off the fringe. Come off the fringe. Come off the fringe. Come off of it. Come off the fringe. Stop limiting the Holy Ghost. Stop saying you don't need what he has to offer. Stop limiting how you receive from him. Mm. More of him. There's a song that um, Bishop Joseph Garlington taught years ago. 
And um, Lord, my soul is thirsty. Can I just touch on a little bit? Won't you come and fill me? Earthly things have left me dry. Only you can satisfy. All I want is more of you. Here's a chorus. All I want is more of you. Lord, I feel your presence. All I want is more of you. Nothing I desire, Lord, than more of you. More of you. More of you. Man, I feel the Lord. Oh, God have mercy. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, we used to sing songs when we were growing up. It made you want more of God. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill it up, Lord. Y'all remember that? Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up. And make me whole Bread of heaven Feed me till I want no more Man, I better cool it <laughs> Oh God, oh God Fill my cup Fill it up and make me whole. Oh, Jesus. That verse, I better leave it alone, I'm telling you. <laughs> we got to stop limiting receiving him. Bishop, you quenched the Holy Ghost. No, I'm not. I'm being sensible because I'm about to lose y'all. And I'm here to teach, not lose you. <laughs> oh my God, I, I gotta close. We gotta stop limiting him. We gotta stop limiting our receiving of him. One more, one more, one more. We gotta stop allowing the works of the enemy. Religion, senseless carnal limits. You gotta stop letting it keep you on the fringes. It ain't doing you no good. Have you received? The Holy Ghost. Paul's question since you believe have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe have you received the Holy Ghost since you Believed. Have you <laughs> received the Holy Ghost since you believe? That's all I want to know. Because he did it before. And he'll do it again. He made a way before. He'll make a way again. He'll He'll fill you if you ask him. Walking around these walls, He'll help you if you let him. I thought by now He'll bless you if you allow him to. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? Father, I pray right now as your apostle, as your manservant, 
as your son. I extend my hands right now. There's no power in my hands. The power is in your name, Jesus. But as an act of faith and as an act of agreement, I extend my hands and I pray to those that are listening to me right now that have not been filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit, that you receive the Holy Ghost. That you receive the Holy Ghost. That you receive the Holy Ghost. Speaking with tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. Change in heart. Change in life. Change in appetite. Receive. 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 In the name of Jesus. Receive. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory, glory. My God, my God, it's time to receive the Holy Ghost. You can only go but so far without it. Receive. Receive. He did it before. He filled this young man who was on his way to a devil's hell. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. He filled me. I was engaged. I was still and suspended. Yeah, me. Before I reached the fourth grade three times, behavioral problem. God grew up in a home of Christian parents. I didn't care nothing about that. I was on my way to hell. Got so bad that God had to let me get warnings. I had a dream, a vision, actually wanted to dream. Saw this ghostly figure come in my room one night, holding up what was going to happen to my life like a tombstone if I didn't repent. I mean, I was in bad shape. Y'all might be saying, ah, oh, that was just your imagination. Well, he changed my life. He changed my life. I'm telling you, he changed my life. And I'm so thankful. Yeah, I've messed up. And the Holy Ghost straightened me up. I've suffered loss of some things because of my stubbornness, my disobedience. But I thank God for the Holy Ghost that's restored me, that strengthened me. And I declare to you, receive the Holy Ghost. Am I saying that you will hear birds tweeting every day? Am I saying that you will, my God, hear a, a symphony or a quintet of string instruments playing every day? No. But I am saying that your life will be better. The trajectory of your life will be set straight. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. See, I've seen them move mountains, right? I've seen them do this before. He'll do it again. Y'all can be stirred up. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. I do believe he's filling people today. I do believe he's going to fill again and again and again. Come on. Receive. Oh, receive. 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 Well, beloved, you want to testify that you've been saved? You want to testify that you received the Holy Ghost? Write it in the chat. We'll see it. My God, call us at 443-776-0255. Again, 443-776-0255. My God, go on our website, www.lbcbaltimore.org. www.lbcbaltimore.org. Come on. Be contacted by those means again. LBC Baltimore, www.lbcbaltimore.org is our website. You want to email us? LBC Ministry at yahoo.com. Want to call us? 443-776-0255. Call us? 443-776-0255. Email us? LBC Ministry at yahoo.com website www.lbcbaltimore.org we love you we appreciate you my god leaders don't forget the leadership intensive intensive ah, intensive i'm all excited the 19th and 20th register you got to register to be able to get the the zoom link to help you call us again at 443 Seven seven six zero two five five for more information. All right, don't forget.
forget Sunday. Look forward to a powerful move of God. Look, we're having a Seder for Passover this year. More information coming up about that. We're having it with a Messianic Jewish congregation and also other Christian churches coming together, my God, to celebrate Passover and the Seder. Also, Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, 7310 Park Heights Avenue between 1 p.m. and 2.30 will be a palm giveaway. We'll be giving away palms on Palm Sunday. My God, our partners and all that drive by can send your partner. Don't miss that. It's going to be blessed. We get to meet you, say hello, amen, on Palm Sunday. Well, God bless you. Got to leave now. But I just thank God for this wonderful song. He's moved mountains. My God, this song, such a blessing, such a powerful word. My God, performed, my God, by my friend and brother, my God, to be soon. Oh, God, have mercy. Elevation worship. My God, Steve Furtick, great man of God. His worship team uh, did this song, published February 2017. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, he'll do it again. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. Oh, my God. He'll do it again. So many artists have done covers of this song. Such a powerful song. We leave you with it. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. Have a tremendous day in Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, this is good worship. I could go lay on the floor right now. I see y'all later. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Bless you all. Got to go. Hope y'all praying for me. Powerful broadcast today. God bless.